Greetings to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. My name is Andrei Shetnikov, and the video I will be presenting today will be dedicated to a rather peculiar toy known as the Celtic Stone. I fabricated it utilizing wood, thus I am unable to bring myself to designate this entity as a stone due to its material composition. I will discuss the Celtic Boat. In the English language, this identical toy is referred to as Rattleback. It made a rattling sound and moved in reverse. And now let us see how it works. So I place the boat on the table, and if you spin it in one direction, well, for this boat it is counterclockwise, then it rotates smoothly and effortlessly without any disruptions or hitches in its motion. However, when I make an attempt to spin it in a clockwise direction, it starts knocking, rocking, and makes a partial turn back in its rotation. Let us give it another try. We are witnessing the exact same movement. There is a rattle, and then it starts to move back. Moreover, another notable point is that it has the ability to move in the correct direction simply by pressing its tail with your hand, and a complete rotation even a little bit more in the counterclockwise direction once again. Press the little tail, and here comes the spinning. And some impatient individuals may argue that our small boat is in violation of the laws of physics because it initially rotates in one direction and subsequently in another direction. However, I believe they were overly hasty in making that statement because if the boat came to a halt as a result of frictional forces and subsequently began rotating from a state of no motion, that would, in fact, be genuinely astonishing. However, she did not stop. Instead, she transitioned into rocking and then from that rocking she began to spin around rapidly. And all of this reminds me of yet another well-known toy. It is simply a jar with a rubber band that is attached to a weight on the inside, creating a fascinating plaything. And this jar has the ability to roll across the table in one direction and then in the other direction. And it does not violate the law of conservation of momentum at all because the reaction of support forces it to move in the opposite direction, thereby maintaining the principle of momentum conservation. In this place, too, we have responses of support. At the decisive tipping point, which leads to the boat commencing its rotation around its axis, we witness the start of the spinning motion. Well, in relation to energy conservation, here we possess the kinetic energy of the can transforming into the potential energy of the twisted spring and then returning here we have the kinetic energy of the boat's rotation transitioning into the kinetic energy of rocking and then back into the kinetic energy of rotation. Certainly, a substantial amount of the energy is inevitably lost, both due to friction and at the moment of these impacts, resulting in a decrease in energy efficiency and the overall effectiveness of the system. Out of curiosity, let's film this movement on a high-speed camera, and we observe the boat rocking almost immediately, even during the spin and from one side to the other, and from bow to stern, then it decelerated its rotation, but continued to sway, and from that end it gradually started moving in the opposite direction, slowly picking up speed as it went, until it was moving steadily in the new direction. The secret of constructing such a boat is straightforward. Its keel does not extend along the axis of the hull, but rather is positioned in relation to this axis. However, providing an explanation for its movement is not an easy task, and when you conduct a search on Google Scholar by typing Rattleback in the search bar, you will find numerous articles that discuss this phenomenon in great detail. Linear approximation, nonlinear approximation, complete contact of the boat with the surface, absence of contact and hence friction losses, lack of contact and consequently frictional losses, and all of these numerous formulas, and you ponder, what can I elucidate in simple terms, as we typically do, when faced with such complexity and a need for clarity? Well, I comprehend that perhaps I understand very little. However, now let's attempt to observe the outcome when I initiate the boat's movement from a standstill position and make it rotate by applying pressure with my finger and see what happens during this process. And we see how in this longitudinal rocking, the boat constantly relies on its skewed keel. Let's try to extract something from here and let the boat tip towards us. I've shown it here, positioned on its keel at this point, with an asymmetrical cross-section. The boat's tilt can be observed in this depiction. And the center of gravity, of course, is not located in this section, but there, in the center of the boat. Nevertheless, in this picture seen from the front, 
the center of gravity is shifted relative to the point of support. And this signifies that at this juncture, a reaction takes place primarily focused in that specific direction towards the center of gravity. But it also has an azimuthal component. I am attaching it here. And this azimuthal component is currently turning this side of the boat at the moment. When the boat rocks and ends up on the opposite side, everything will be symmetrical there. And the twisting moment will arise once more, just like it did previously. And thus the boat starts to rotate slowly from its original position when we simply rocked it back and forth with gentle movements. Rod Cross from Sydney, from whom I borrowed this explanation, suggests strengthening it with a demonstration of a model similar to this. This is an aluminum plate with two weights asymmetrically attached to its ends, creating an imbalanced distribution of mass. And now we will witness the consequences of placing this plate on the table and rocking it to observe what happens to it. Push, and the plate does indeed start rotating towards the weight. Let's attempt to push harder and see what happens. The rotation is being reproduced one more time. It is evident that the rotation is quite systematic, so the model indeed helps to clarify something. But to understand how the transfer of energy from rotational motion to vibrational energy occurs, that's certainly a whole different level of complexity. Let's take another look at this process in fast motion. It's evident how the boat tips over, sways stern to bow, and from side to side, making it clear that all of this is very complex. And for those who want to delve into this process in all of its details, well, there are articles that can be studied. Also, a video lecture by Alexander V. Karpitian in front of students at the Faculty of Mechanics and Mathematics, Moscow State University. Feel free to have a look. The link will be provided below and gain an understanding of what real theoretical mechanics are currently engaged in. And for the last query, I have made preparations for this spoon that is bent and curved in an unusual manner. I position it on the mirror and give it a twist, for example, in a counterclockwise direction to see the desired effect. Rocking. Altering its course and it continues to sway, and upon observation it modifies the direction of its rotation once again, exhibiting its dynamic and unpredictable nature. During the third attempt, the outcome was not successful. Well... Let's try spinning it in a clockwise direction and see if that yields more favorable results, shall we? Rocking. Adjustment in direction. The movement has changed its course due to a shift in its original direction. And rocking once more. And one additional change direction skillfully, 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 skillfully. No, after all, it changes direction, directs, changes direction. Twice with the boat, I couldn't achieve this no matter how much I polished. Well, uh, listen. If for the depicted displacement of weights relative to the keel here, the chosen direction is counterclockwise rotation, then how can the boat modify its rotation in order to change from counterclockwise to clockwise direction? What kind of oscillations are needed for this? This question is not so difficult. You can try to answer it based on very general considerations. And kindly share your valuable thoughts on this in the comments section of this video on YouTube.